Joshua made the difficult decision to escape his country of birth, saying it was like living in an African North Korea. We have a dictatorship government. Uh, it's a little bit really hard to live there as a, a youth. Anybody from 18 years old up to 65 is everybody's a soldier. Yeah, uh, conscription. Whenever one wants to reach 18 years old, they conscripted to be a soldiers. There's a military training for everybody, even girls. Conscription is open-ended in Eritrea, so people can be trapped against their will for decades. So like Joshua, thousands flee the country every year seeking a better life. Many fleeing are unaware of the dangers ahead. We walked for eight nights non-stop without proper food and drink just to cross the border to Sudan. You go, you, cl you climb mountains, cliffs, rivers, everything is in a way. On top of that, the soldiers, like, there's guards everywhere. Joshua's journey began 11 years ago, when he was 21, when thousands were attempting to cross the Mediterranean Sea to get to Europe, a route which became the centre of a political crisis when the Arab Spring erupted in the Middle East and North Africa. In the ensuing chaos, Joshua became trapped in Libya. At that time, uh, Muammar Gaddafi was in, in power, so they had a deal between him and the European especially uh, France, Italy and UK. We were blocked for two years from leaving the country. Mm -hmm. Now, l suddenly, we start leaving through the ports from, from the city. But eventually, the smugglers found a way to get the boats running and Joshua resumed his journey to freedom, but not without heartache. The reality is that uh, 300 people drowned at, um, in the Mediterranean Sea and nobody's talking about it. I know a lot of them, but two, two of these are very close friends. They, they were with me for two years in one room, sleeping together. Joshua was one of the lucky ones making it to Italy. I went straight to Rome and I used to sleep on the street. Yeah, my intention not to stay in Rome, uh, but even though, even if, if, if I would like to stay there, I would have ended up in the street. Joshua was now desperate to start a new life in the UK, so he boarded a train to Calais. With no papers, his only way was via the then preferred route of lorry boarding. The day that I crossed it, me and uh, another two guys, we bought, we bought that truck. I don't know where it's gonna go, but I know it is a, a, a UK number plate. I ended up in Cambridge. After a few weeks, maybe two or three weeks, they gave me the, all the papers that I need to live in the UK. Joshua is now 32 and has been in London for almost a decade. He is now thriving as a successful self-employed taxi driver. His dream of a better life has come true. And his story, perhaps, explains why others behind him continue to take similar enormous risks to reach safer shores. Lape Alarinoye. TRT World, London.